What a cool car, 1952 Packard, 288 cubic inch, straight eight flathead with a manual transmission. Saw just a couple pictures of this thing on the interwebs there and had to have it. It was even covered in snow, couldn't really see everything, but nonetheless, we went and loaded her up on the trailer. Hit it in my tree row for quite a while, but listen, the snow is gone, fellers. Let's go hook a chain on this thing, drag her up here to the shed and see if we can get this thing running and driving. Real quick here, fellers, I want to talk to you guys about Omaze. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating all of that money to chosen charities all over the world. And right now, they're giving away this massive, gorgeous, $4.3 million Lake Tahoe dream house. This thing has everything. Four bedrooms, seven bathrooms, game room, theater, you name it. I just, how do you, how do you vacuum something this size? is what I'm wanting to know. And listen, you don't want the house, that's fine. You walk away with $3 million in cash. You could have rusty acres and then some. Just think of the car parts, it's a lot. Plus, if you register before February 25th at midnight, you can also walk away with this gorgeous 2022 Ram TRX. This thing is completely loaded. And of course, it's got that big 6.2 liter pumping out over 700 horsepower might need it up there in the mountains with your new mansion. All you gotta do is click that link below down in the description, go to omaze.com forward slash vice grip. Did the process myself, super simple, only took me a couple minutes and I just, I got all my fingers. Here's my favorite and the best part, fellas. Funds raised will support after school all-stars and their work to provide free, comprehensive programs and essential resources for low-income students and families across the US. All the donations go to a great cause, plus you have a chance to win some amazing things. I just had to bring this to you. It's completely mind-bottling. So again, go down there, link in the description, omaze.com forward slash vice 
Good luck to you. Now let's get back to this old Packard. I'm excited to see if this thing will run or do something at least. Well, so far the old girl seems to roll really easy and Jessica said it felt like there was even brakes or at least the pedal didn't go to the floor. So that is really neat. Now the old timer I bought this from, really nice guy. He thought it had a 327 in it, but I'm pretty positive this is a Packard 200 model. So it would have the 288, but we could take a closer look. There should be a casting on the head there. And then there should be a body number. Hopefully that plate's still on the car. And there's some other things like the grill doesn't have the teeth in it. It's got the single strip of chrome down the fenders there. Those are all reminiscent of the 200 model instead of the 300. It's definitely not the 250 or there was a few other ones, but it's a really neat car overall. And if you owned a Packard back in the 50s or even before, it was a prestigious thing. They were considered a very nice luxury car, but still affordable. So they were right up there with Cadillac. I mean, all the luxuries and things. You could get a ton of options with this car too. In fact, I could probably read you off some that were pretty neat. Found some of this in the Auto History Preservation Society. You should Google web it if you got an old rig. Genuine leather upholstery, you can upgrade that for 153 bucks. Heater and defroster, signal seeking radio with the rear speaker fellers, way in the back. Windshield washer, Easomatic power brakes here fellers and fellettes, 39 bucks. Spotlights, fog lamps, wood grain tissue dispenser. I mean, come on, they don't even have that today. Vanity mirrors, road lamps, venta shades, chrome exhaust deflector, curb feelers, right from the factory, feller. Gas door guard, locking gas door, door edges, spare tire, valve extension, fuse kit, trouble lights, under hood lamps, wheel blocks, white wall tires. There's so much stuff here. Packard was, like I say, a pretty darn luxurious rig. Now, they only made 6,987, if this is a Packard 200, which we'll find out here in a minute. Original sticker price, $2,494. Isn't that something? As far as production goes, it's looking like it was probably one of the most produced vehicles because it was kind of the entry level from the Packard because then you had the Deluxe, the 250, the 300, and then the 400, the big dog, you know what I mean? But any who and how and way, let's hook our peepers into this thing, walk around a little bit, see what we got going on. I think I got this missing piece of chrome here. You know, at first glance, and I'll get you guys in closer here, we've got some pretty severe foamage. That's approved. Peeking in, I can see some license plates. Didn't see that before. Interior is, well, <laughs> it's there. I mean, the bottom of the seat looks nice, but it is pretty rusted out. Let's go straight for the model. Get that out of the way here. Ooh, need some WD on that door. So we got a plate here, look at this. Packard Motor Car Company, Detroit, Michigan. So $25.95, I'm positive that's a 200 body. So for sure we've got a 200. Trim code 44, paint scheme M. And there's a little glance at the, boy, that is a thick smell. We'll shut that for now get around the exterior. Isn't this neat how the handle follows the trim here instead of the traditional handle here? And it works really well. But this is a foamage I was talking about. I mean, I approve. They even angled it, cut it, everything. Fender skirts are missing. Could have been an option, but it looks like, well, maybe not. I don't, maybe this one didn't have it. More foamage. I wonder if the gas tank's still in it. Oh yeah, look at that. Not the locking option. See, we're learning stuff here, fellers. Stainless looks to be in really good condition. Normally this is just gets the hail damages and stuff like that. You can see they got some pitting here, but that's no big deal. But the rest of this is just beautiful. Look at that, all the way around. Front windshield, it's all there. Again, no dents, nothing. All this stuff here, I had a devil of a time getting this up in the tree row. That's actually from mud spray from my pickup. 
it was on a trailer and we were getting stuck and we just had to four high it and put the hammer down to get back there and then the 200 c they have this grill and i think the other ones have like they call them teeth or tooth grills toothuses they got more teeth it doesn't have the denture look that's what i'm saying there's some other stuff in here and then they had some different hood ornaments they had the single and the pelican stuff like that no dents on the hood bumper needs re-chromed this is what that piece looks like on the other side we need poverty caps are missing go figure maybe they're in the trunk we got to go look there yet and we got some truck tires conquerors a forward slash t nankang so those seem good more advanced foamage over here you can see a little bit back there as well but i mean otherwise you know it's pretty good do have a little dent over here darn it we got an exhaust tip later in there hope oh, she got crunched up rear speaker option maybe not sure we'll have to wait and see nice little tail lights look at that 40s and 50s cars i tell you what fellers my favorite eras they just ooze style and character and look at all the curves and the shapes and you could just tell that every car went through just strenuous design and it just they look so much better plus you know we're talking real steel bumper to bumper this is a 3700 pound car and it's a two-door coupe so think about that for a minute Roof's not caved in. I'm just really jazzed up about the glass here, fellas. No bullet holes, nothing's kicked out. Of course, this is from age, but this really ain't that bad. Quarter glasses are perfect. Back one looks to be perfect condition as well. That's a huge score right there. Well, let's get in the trunk here, see what we got going on. Hopefully there's not head gaskets or body parts. Talking cars here, fellers. Settle down. What do we got here? Toothpaste? No, paper towel edge. Ooh, that's a good digital connection right there. Front pocket find. Listen, the reason I started the trunk, fellers, and I've been doing this, I've been doing this a long time. No, nope, that's hurt in the back. Okay. It'll tell you everything you need to know about this rig. Usually there's receipts, some call them receipts, I think it's French, something about money spent. Anyway, history, okay? Also, any parts changed, missing, conglomerations, whatever. They're all back here. People sell rigs, eh, throw it in the trunk. Or if it's a pickup, of course, the box. So let's get in here. Let's get, in, let's get inside of this thing. Okay, open. Clap on. Oh, need a key, one second. Tell you what. I definitely could have drank beer with this guy. Plus, I think his name was Bubba. We're basically best friends. Oh, we got a lot of stuff. Does this stay? Nope. Got to get a proper later. Oh, man. Whew. All right. Okay. Well, let me get a proper later, and then I'll get you, I'll get you guys in there. What we got here, fellas, is classic junk trunk. But this is only stage two of 14. It's not that bad, actually. We got some blanketage. Oh, goodness gracious. What do we got here? Oh, I know exactly what that is. This is the knife used to expertly cut the foamage. And I can use that as a steak knife, actually. We'll just run that through the cheek poker, clean it up a little bit, and we'll run that right back into the house. Got some blankets, looks like, maybe? Okay, sure. Guy can always use blankets. What else we got? We got a body panel. 1999. I wonder if this is when it was off the road. Tennessee. I bet that's that's got to be it. All right. Well, there's our answer there. 22 years. Sparkulators. Brand new. Okay. Get them out. What else is this? What do we got? Is that a distributor gasket? I think it is. Okay, this is going good so far. Bunch of newspaper. I'm not gonna read the news because it's 
probably a little old, you know. Got some aluminium foil. Got to keep that. That's good stuff. Okay, what else we got? Putty knife. This is this was a good investment. I'm, I ain't kidding you. No way. Jigsaw blades, brand new. I can't believe it. Well, I got to. I'm looking at them. I think that's trash. What, what have we got in here? I'm kind of excited now. Dakota Digital? No, can't be. No, okay, they're gone. I was gonna say, I would've got all my money back. All of it. Ooh, got a socket, three quarter. Boy, this is some good finds back here. I ain't kidding you. I think the feller was making a trash run. See here? He just never made her to the trash. Oh, this has been expertly patched. This guy knows what's going on. So you lay screen first. Did you guys watch the El Camino video? Screen first, then foamage. Because this will hold your foam and shape it up for you. So he must have just ran out of foam. See, these are the what he cut off. So we got some good finds. But I think for now, we'll just, you know, let's bring that down like that. Pretend it's not in there. I just can't believe we got new sparkulators. This is $25 right here. Oh yeah, brand and, oh wait, no. Nope. These have been pulled out, fellers. Well, maybe there's some new ones. There's some new ones in it, maybe. But these didn't look, I mean, she's running richer than Bill Gates, but a little bit of sandpaper and on the cheek poker, just jam them back in. I guess let's open the hood, see what we got going on under there. We can also see if it's a 288 or a 327. Should be a 288, unless it was swapped on, which, you know, that does and could happen. So, we just don't know. Been a while since I popped a Packard open. I think there's a lever, it's like a stick hanging out. Here it is. You pull, push, there we go. You know, I always used to see these in the junkyard when I was roaming around with my grandpa and my dad. They just, the straight eights, they went with them for so long. It was actually one of the reasons they kind of petered out and eventually died. Everybody else, like Chevy, was producing the V8s and they just got behind and parts and people to work on them and stuff like that just became expensive and you started seeing them in the junkyards a lot. I remember seeing these all the time in old yards and farmhouses and homesteads and junkyards when I was a kid. Oh yeah, boy that thing is massive. It is definitely a 288, but that's still really cool. We got a battery in here. Oh, be dipped. Guy's been sitting here staring this thing down and I gotta tell you, not only does it look 103% complete, but there's some new partage in here. Fuel make it happener, generator, lightning whirler cap. There's some work that's been had. This thing might just fire right off. I don't know what, what the issue is. Probably a bad clutch or rear ends out of it or something. No, it coasted. So yeah, we're back to clutch, definitely. Oh, that's great. There's so much going on in here. I just, I don't know. I'm getting dizzy. I don't know where to start, I guess. Let's start here. We got a battery. That's, I mean, that's really good. Six volt system. You could tell because of the way that it is. And also because of the way that it is there. So that's pretty neat. Has not been converted to 12 volts, which is, in my opinion, great. Because what usually happens, see this old cloth wiring, this original wiring in here? It's throughout the entire car. And the resistance and impedance and amperage and voltages is made for 6 volts. But a lot of times what happens is fellers convert these to 12 volts. They don't upgrade the wiring. Well, you're driving a smoking missile there feller i mean all that wiring is just turning into licorice and glowing red you're gonna burn the rig down is what i'm is what i'm saying to you right now now you could jump start these with 12 volts really quick i wouldn't crank on it forever you burn the starter out but 
if you're going to go to 12 volts, make sure you put a whole wiring kit in, like painless wiring or American wire or whoever has the cheapest, you know, kit available at the time. Just something to consider. Plus, you blow it out all your bulbs and stuff like that. You got to change all your lights. Let's get right into this. This is really cool. See Packard and then Thunderbolt. Look at this big thing. It's so cool. It's literally like, it looks like a Lego block sitting in here. Now I do see some auto light sparkulators. So those AC Delcos were taken out. Someone put some auto lights in. We got a different lightning hose. We got a blue streak. That's an O'Reilly Auto Parts lightning can in here. We got a new generator sitting down here. Maybe even a new belt. Someone's been into the thermostat. We got some room temperature vulcanization cream in there. Oh, another new lightning hose. Look at this. There's a fuel make it happener in here. And that looks, I mean, looks pretty newish. This is, well, that's going to make a fire. So maybe we'll leave that. Whoa. Okay, that fitting down there is loose. I'll have to fuel pump make it happen here. But boy, they jammed this thing in there. But anyway, getting back to this, I got sidetracked. 288. So this is, in fact, a 288 straight eight. Look at that. Way back there. We got a piston just doing the thing. Got the windshield washer jar still in here. Got the wiper motor. I mean, everything is basically in this rig. I think this is the original rad. It's just got a new capillator. These look like they've been hammered on. That's approved. Hopefully the starter's still hanging in there. That's been tss, 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 Craigslist rebuilt. Old oil bath breather. Maybe we can, oh yeah, she's loose too even. Yeah, look at that. That's a Mopar fuel making happener. In fact, we just put one of those on a Dodge fellers. So that is the same, I could tell you right now, because of this cheesy little thing, that is the same exact fuel make it happener I got off of Evil Bay. Those are about 50 bucks shipped. It actually worked. So we might have a shot of that working. That's all plugged in. Pretty darn neat. The guy back there, no not you, the, this guy back in the recliner, so Derek, tell us a little bit more about this engine. Looks pretty neat, so I will. They only had a two and a half inch bore fellers, which is, that's a really small piston if you think about it, and that's how they jammed so many in that straight line there. But they did have a three and three quarter inch stroke, so they ended up making about 135 horsepower, which was quite a bit for this era. And get this, 230 foot pounds of torque at only 2,000 RPM. So this thing was a torque monster back in the day. Now the Aja Magic, this is the Manuel, of course, they had slightly higher compression at 7.5 to one. This is gonna be a seven flat to one compression ratio. So it'll burn anything you throw on that pretty much. And again, they used these straight eights for years and years and years and years. And they were proven to be extremely reliable. And when you think about it, they were fast. In fact, they did a lot of racing with these straight eights. I, listen, believe you me. No, yeah. <sighs> kind of just been, you know, trying to pump myself up to get in here. When I cracked this thing open to get to that plate in there, it hit me. I couldn't even, I can't even explain the smell that I had then. And I think what happened was there was a lot of moisture in here from when it got full of snow and then it's just been baking back there in the trees. Not the good bacon. Settle down there, Fred, okay? Anyway, let's open this up and we'll get a tour in here. I gotta be honest, I haven't been this nervous in a while. Oh yeah, I know exactly what that is. Yep. It's like a wet shop vac filter and old furniture. They do not mix well is what i'm saying this seat is a going to town look at this door panel what is happening right now the back seat no come on Ooh, screwdriver flat blade 
Nice. No, Allen key? This thing is a gold mine. I gotta get to the toolbox. Shop lion's in here already checking it out. One of the reasons I call him motor, he always gotta sit in the driver's seat or the hood, and he's always got his little motor running. But anyway, look at this interior, guys. This might be, I was told now, listen, I was told this is a 75,000 mile car. This is water damage, not age. So clearly the weather stripping has an issue, but what a beautiful interior. And the seats really aren't that bad. I mean, a little bit, I mean, it needs work there, but look at this. You would think this would just be completely shot if it was super high miles. This is from Sun, clearly, but that's too bad. The other side didn't get it, so it must have been parked this way. Find any mice? Huh? He's working on it. We got license plateage. That is completely approved. Look at this. Oh, and some duct tape in there. You gotta seal it off. And got some ankle vintage for the rear passengers. Also over there, we can fix that with a few more plates. But look how nice this interior is. Nice looking gauges. Got that radio. Just simple but elegant. Got a heater in here. And there we got the 75,451.5 miles. Nice looking clock thingy. Must not work. Someone got her up at high noon there. Rearview mirror looks to be in really good shape. Headliner, unfortunately, she's got some sag in her. You know what I mean? There's a few things that don't lie, fellers. Kids, yoga pants, and headliners. This one's a little bit saggy. You know what I mean? Got some openings back there in the trunk. I'm not sure if that was the rear speaker option or not. There's nothing there currently. I'm going to say probably not. Armrest missing there. We got armrestage both sides back here. No. Do you think this actually rolls down? Nope. Well, we got some rollage upage. Maybe the other side works. Oh, look at that. Just like butter. It's always risky. So you just don't know if they're going to go back up. That does. We got kids. Nope. Not even close to the right keys. Great. Whoops. Wrong set. That looks like... Almost looks like a Mopar key. Not quite sure what's going on there. Blinker sticks. Seem like they want to blink. What would this be? Not sure. Headlights. Pedals don't look super worn. Got somewhere, but... You know what? I'll be dipped if I couldn't agree that this is probably a 75,000 mile car. Got some more plateage over there on the floor. I mean, basically, someone already fixed it for me. That or I already worked on this car and I just forgot. The wheel color is horrendous, though. That's got to go or we got to get some poverty caps on this thing. Stat. Guy almost just jumped in to twisting on the ignition stick in there, but well, I ain't got that to turn yet. So, mean whilst, let's get this thing way up in our teeth. Malls will take a look underneath of it. Normally when I do these, they're laying up in the grass and a guy can't quite see what's going on, but we got an opportunity right now to get this thing up on the lift. And I'm just curious, is the frame rotten? I don't know, I guess. Does it have a drive shaft? Never looked. Never looked. Foamage. I think what we're gonna do, fellas, we'll just start in the rear and work our way all the way forward. I wish there was smell-o-vision, you know what I mean? Really get you in here with the guy. But I can tell you this right now, this is the heaviest, like, industrial gear oil, like, just grease smell I've had in a while. I mean, it's up in the sniffer, I'm gonna tell you that. And I think a big part of that reason is we've got some leakage, basically bumper to bumper, but we'll cover that. Let's start back here and work our way forward. Pretty neat design right here I wanted to point out. You know, ignore this, that's fine. But this here, this shackle design, 
you got to think that Chevy and Ford pretty much had everything sewn up. So you got to get pretty creative with how you build stuff. And that's really neat how they did that there. The fuel tank, look at this, fellas. We got some new rubber line in here, hose clamp laters. So I'm wondering if, well, that's empty. But I'm wondering if this was drained and flushed. If in not, we got a little drainage there. So that's pretty cool. Shocks, this spiral bound stuff here, that's kind of 70s, which would make sense. If this is a 52, you drive it 20 years, you throw shocks on it, and there it sits. So these definitely aren't original, but I mean, they're shot, I'm sure, completely at this point. Rear end is leaking significantly. That's going to be a pinion seal up here. Are we going to find one? Nope. Probably not. We'll just completely ignore this and just let it drip on the floor or wherever we park the unit. Now, one big thing that I want to show you guys really quick, it's pretty neat. Look at this frame. Okay, are you looking at it? Look at the shape of this frame. Packard borrowed this design from what manufacturer? Beep, 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 beep. Beep. I don't know if that's the way that that song goes, but look at this X frame here. Drive shaft going through the frame. Exhaust going through the frame. Make your guess, because I'm going to show you. If you said Buick, fellers or fellettes, you were right, and I'll show you. Kind of hard to see because we got these planks in here, but you could see the X back there. That's a Buick frame design, and the drive shaft and this is a tube there's actually not a drive shaft there's a shaft inside of a tube that goes from the output all the way to the housing but anyway the frame has that same x pattern where the exhaust and the drive shaft goes through the actual frame they're almost identical she's been up on a jack one two three four five times minimum just that side six seven eight over there it's going to sound really horrible with an exhaust leak there. 79 foot long muffler. Maybe she'll kind of be quiet. This is really neat. Look at this fellers. We've got a cable operated overdrive unit on here. Now this little beep boop box with the severed off wiring, I don't know. What am I looking at here? You Packard fellers, put her down there in the bleep bloop box, what that is. So we've got a manual with a overdrive. There's that big old straight eight. Thing is massive. Must have oil in it, because she's leaking everywhere. So that's good. Radiator's got a little leak. This is neat. Up front here, instead of on the backward side, on a corner, or something like that. Oh. The suspension is dialed right in. We'll ignore that. This one's about ready to do the same thing. Oh, that's okay. These tires, man, I don't know if they're gonna hang in there or not, but we're gonna find out. Expert brake line runnage, see that? Yeah, that's, that's a factory option. Holds more fluid that way. So that's pretty much it underneath it's just as worse as on topper so that's good what do we got for you joinage oh those seem pretty solid plenty of slop elsewhere though so that's fine well let's get this thing back on the ground see if we can get it fired up throw on the digital meter here quick what do we got what's it saying 20 that can't be right 17.3, what in the devil is going on? Well, for Pete's sake. 8.3 volts. Wonder if that's an eight volt battery, it must be. Well, I don't know. It says it's got juice, I guess, so let's jump in this and twist on it and See what happens. Oh yeah. 
First time I've sat in this thing. She's definitely a going to town rig. All right, let's see if I can figure out this key. I don't know, jiggle, jiggle, shake, twist. Shake, shake, jiggle, twist. In, out, jiggle, shake. Punch, twist, shake. That wasn't it. Well, help me understand this situation. Got a free rag up here. Well, I just don't know. Okay. It turned. I had battery lights and oil lights. Nothing. You know, it's pretty common. Oh, here we go. Okay, we got a push button. We got push buttonage right under here on the dash. I'm thinking that's, didn't we just have voltages? Oh, the key is out and the ignition is on. So that's, that's good. I'm thinking, oh, that's cigarettes. Well, where is the, oh, this must be the overdrive. No, that's e-breakage. I don't know, there's too many levers in here but I don't think we got enough battery. So here's the plan if we had one. Let's throw the battery charger up on the unit here. While that's boiling this thing out, let's go ahead and disco the fuel line and hook up a temporary rig so we can get some fresh fuel. I don't know what's in this tank. I don't know the last time it ran. I know nothing about it. So let's make sure we shoot some fresh juice into the fuel, make it happener. If in and when a guy gets her cranking. Well, this rig is supposed to auto-magically detect what kind of battery we got in here. Oh, I think she's plumb dead here. Oh, there we go. Engine start, engaged. Okay, let's get this fuel stuff off the thing and the stuff. I wonder if Alabama's ever gonna, you know, do anything again. That'd be, that'd be something to see. I ain't kidding you. Well, get off of here. I just never seen the likes. Well, that broke off now. That's great. What is it? That's... Oh, yeah, Lucy. I'll teach you how to do something. Like, get off of there. Goodness gracious. This thing's loose now, I suppose. Why has it got an up swoop on it? No one knows. I wonder if we can side swoop it. Side swoop. Yeah, maybe that'll, it's a better swoopage this way. I don't know. I don't design them. I just work on them, you know? Well, this rig's a whole lot better than the other one. Plus, this kind of snapped and I don't know, wasn't doing much. We got the Wix 33003 on here, of course. That's 3 8 line now, fellers. So that's gonna get about 17 more horsepowers in here. No. That does absolutely nothing. Disconnected the fuel line from the tank down at the pump and gas started just spurting out. So it's got fuel in it and it didn't look that bad. There wasn't any chunks or anything like that. So I just hooked it back up. We're just gonna have to try to bring her back around. Might have to dump just a little bit of sauce down the app here. Get this thing spinning fast enough to pump some fuel in, but I'm kind of hoping, based on everything else, she might just take right off. So this is what I was talking about earlier. There's the unit off that 318 rig. There's the chicken lo mein unit that I put on it. And that's absolutely identical, other than this. You know, we got a bend here, not there, but the same rig. Pretty interesting. You could throw Mopar stuff on your Packard, I guess. This thing's just been ripping away. I don't know that it realizes it's a eight volt. It's probably confused, but it seems to be holding around 10. And I can hear a little bit of boiling and I got that acid up in the nostrils. So let's jump inside and see if that button works, I guess. Oh yeah, look at this. We got bat and oil lights. Okay, right here. Oh yeah. Oh no, that was it. Okay, we got a bad battery, I think. I dialed up O'Reilly's and they actually have a six volt battery in stock, believe it or not, and I got like a whole pile of cores back here. So I'm gonna go trade one of these in, grab one of those, and we'll throw that in. No go handle on this unit, but 
Then I got to thinking about her. I don't remember seeing a 6V with a go handle on her. I could be wrong though, could be wrong. What in the world? Okay. This ought to give us a fighting chance to get this thing spinning over. About the worst thing you can do is bang on the battery posts, so just bang on them to install them, basically. There we go. And then let's just see what this machine says to us. What do we got? What is it? How's it doing? 6.3 Vs. Beep, pop, boop, pop, beep, boop, beep. I'm a computer. Boost mode? Why? It doesn't need the boost. I think I'm just gonna turn that off. <laughs> All right, let's re-CC if this button is the thing for the starter. Yep. All right. Now we gotta we gotta relax a little bit here. We better check on the Earl, make sure the bearings are floating in some sort of juice. I think I just saw a fuel spurt up, so the fuel pump make it happen or is happening. And maybe we should put a couple gallons of fresh fuel in this. Again, I don't know how long this has been sitting. For some reason, the rear window has rolled itself down. That's neat. And then we'll dump just a little bit of something down to fuel make it happen. See if this thing will bark off and make some smoke or something. You know, I sure I'm glad this old giant ain't locked up like Alcatraz. That could have been a nightmare on Maple Street. See, oh my goodness. That's some thin oil. Lots of gas in it. Lots and lots of gas in that. We probably should change on that. I definitely don't have a fill tray for this unit. Doubt anybody local is gonna. Well, we could at least drain what's in there, put some fresh juice in, if we can get this thing to fire off first. I'm gonna go mix up a concoction or find something, put down the carburetor. Found a splash of this, 40 to one. Run my chainsaw on it, but also good for starting rigs. Oh, way too much. Perfect. Well, there's a little bit of fuel in the fuel fill tray, so if this fires off, it could stand a chance to sit there and idle for us. I don't think it's getting any sparkles, gentlemen. I wonder if it's this ignition. It's not quite taut, you know what I mean? Well, we're gonna have to test on the sparkles. All right, I got my little light bulb thing hooked up in here. If it flashes, we got sparkle. What is that heat coming from? Ouch. That coil is on fire. We must not have a resistor in line here. That thing is legitimately oven hot burn is what I'm saying. Anyway, we'll ignore that. Got this wire hooked up to the starter. Should be able to just tap this on the battery and spin this thing over. Let me make sure the key's on still. Yep. Let's see if she's got spark out here. Yep, oh. Okay, well, I guess it's got spark all of a sudden. Is it not even smoking? It's sitting here idling. I can't believe this. I guess I got to though, I'm looking right at it. This thing sounds good. I can't believe how quiet this thing is. Are you listening to it? Listen. Shh. <laughs> Old flathead. 
Oh, we got a fuel leak. We got some fuel leakage. Okay, let's snug that up. Oh, it's going right on the exhaust. That's where you want fuel to land. How about now? What's it say? That gas doesn't look that bad from the tank. I think that might have right sized that. I can't believe this thing's sitting here just idling. I gotta get some ice cube juice for this. Oh, check oil pressure. Well, you know, the light ain't on and I ain't hearing banging, so. Oil pressure. Go down a cylinder. Ouch! That's a strong coil. I was gonna switch it, but. There we go. Ouch! That's a strong coil. Whew! Okay, well, I guess, I guess it's a runner. This thing's sitting here running like a solar machine. barely hear it running. What a neat old car. Fired right up. Yeah, look at this fuel. It looks great. Might, might be a little close. Maybe we band there over here a little bit. Huh. Scary part. Let's see if we've got a clutch. Well, I went in the gear. I think we do. Wow, by golly. No. And all the gears. Horn don't work. Uh oh. Gonna have to sell it. Nope. Ain't for sale. Okay. I was just, I was just joking. Wow. The thing runs really good. That's incredible. Let's see if it restarts. Oh. This is a going to town rig if I've ever seen one. It runs, little man. What do you think about this one? It looks cool. You know what? I agree with you 106%. Well, clearly we gotta go just jam this thing on the road. Haven't pressed the brake pedal yet. We'll wait till uh, you know we get on the highway down there. Here's what I'm thinking. I drove by the 76, maybe it's a 77. I don't know. It's a late 70s Chrysler couple dozen times way down in Pulaski. I don't know, I think it's 50 or 60 miles from me or something. But anyway, worth a shot. They're never home it seems like, but it's getting to be after five. Maybe we can catch them around supper or something. Let's tootle on by and maybe we can make a deal on this old thing. If I remember right, she's yeller, butterscotch flavored. Not sure. Gonna load up some hobo freight tools, a couple odds and ends just in case. Maybe even a fuel can. Slam the hood. Let's go. Well, I've already put down quite a few miles. Forgot my SGs. Can't see nothing. The dying animal sound is the speedometer. It's doing this on 110. Boy, she puts on some miles. Clock is stuck. Fuel gauge doesn't work. Temperature gauge doesn't work. Nothing works. Radio doesn't work. Ah, you don't need any of that. Also, top speed is 42. 
blame my chip system here. That's because the fuel making happener ain't happening. We got something, something is awry. You give her throttle, it falls on its face. So you have like one 50 second throttle and that's it. I gotta try to stay above 40. I never thought I'd get a ticket for going too slow. The other thing is I got no lights. We only got about an hour of daylight, so I don't think my return trip is gonna go well, is what I'm saying. But we're too far in it now, I guess, so we're just gonna keep on going. Captain's log 52 Packard. I do have to say for three shocks, it does handle surprisingly well and does float. Not gonna make it up this hill, am I? <laughs> Good thing I kept the for sale sign in the back window, who knows? Maybe I'll make a deal to get back home. Smet truck just passed me. We're doing uh, 26 miles an hour. I've also ate about 17 pounds of miscellaneous debris. That is a nice looking valley down there though. He's got a shed and, geez, slow down! It startled me. A little bit. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We got a little bit of downhill. This thing shifts so smooth, stops really nice. It's a pretty darn solid car. Just got to figure out this carburetor issue. I don't know if I'm ever going to find an original one. Kind of been having this crazy thought about what if a guy were to put like a Holly sniper on it or something? I know some of you just fell out of your chair. Listen, I get it, okay? I get it, but nice easy starts, great fuel economy. A little bit more HPs out of her. I don't know, kicking it around. You could bleep bloop it down below. What you think about that? One of the things I really like about 40s and 50s cars is you just feel so much more connected to the road. Like you feel the steering all the way down to the tires, the brakes, the way it handles, it kind of sways. I don't know, it's just 
just way better to me than new cars. It's hard to explain. I just like the feeling of 40s, 50s, even 30s cars. We're one mile to the road we need to turn on. The old Packard actually made it. It's pretty impressive, I gotta be honest. This old flathead runs really good minus the fuel make it happen or issue. Doesn't get hot. The jump gauge actually did start coming up. It was just staying so cool. Neat old car. Pretty sure I just found this place. Trail is a little rough. Good thing we got truck tires on this thing from the 80s, you know what I mean? I'm gonna quick see if anyone's home. I messaged them and they said someone should, might be here, maybe ish so that would be nice i've been trying to get together with this fella for quite some time over this oh my goodness this thing is they need a little bit of gravel you know what i mean we're kind of just mud bogging right now hope we don't get stuck Chevys. Ooh. We got a ramp truck, fellers. F350. Cordoba. Well, here she is. What a rig. Look at this door. Might need some tires and wheels. Gotta put that on the list, you know. Pretty solid, actually. Doesn't look like a ton of rust. This feels really weird looking at it first, to be honest. It's just different, oof. Oof, duh. That's too bad. Wonder what's under here. Oh, look at that. 400? Come on. Needs a radiator, apparently. That ain't looking right. Huh. That's not a good sign. Oof da. Look at them seats. Got some boom booms in the back. 38 thermostats. Lots of mold. Kiage. Boy, I don't know. She's pretty rough. Guy's asking 1500 for it. I don't know what I can get it for. Shaggage. Well, I don't know, fellas. That one would be... Pretty tough revival. I mean, she's in rough shape, but you guys let me know what you think. Bleep bloop it down there in the comments if I should try to pick that thing up. We toss some numbers around. It does have a title and keys, which is nice, but still a little bit more than I'd like to pay for it, but we'll see. You guys let me know. I gotta hightail it. I ain't got any lights on this rig, so I gotta try to get back as quick as possible. Normally I ask you fellers what to do with these rigs, but I think I got this one under control. She's way too solid of a rig to just let sit in the trees. I wouldn't mind motoring this in the town or bingo or tavern every now and then or something like that, but we got to figure out some shock elators, definitely some better tires, and then obviously that fuel system, the whole thing needs to be gone through or changed or something like that. If you've got some ideas, I guess you could throw those down below as well. Guys, don't forget to check out that incredible opportunity from Omaze. There's a link down there in the description for that. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.